let's talk about optical discs. The first major optical disc format was compact disc or CD, but now we also have DVD and Blu-ray. Here's an optical disc. The data is actually stored on the back in a spiral using little tiny pits. This is the cross section of an optical disc. Then here's a pit. The pit changes the way that a laser is reflected off of the disc. When the laser beam hits the disc, it's scattered. On a different part of the disc that doesn't have a pit, the laser beam is reflected. So we can use the pits to record zeros and ones for data on the disc. In the case of compact disc, which is the least dense optical storage standard, the pits are half a micron wide, they're between 0.8 and 3 microns long, they're 0.11 microns deep, and the distance between adjacent tracks is 1.6 microns. DVD and Blu-ray use even smaller pits to get bigger densities. They also have to use lasers with shorter wavelengths in order to detect these smaller pits. Compact disc uses a laser with a wavelength of 780 nanometers. That's a red laser. That gives us a capacity of 700 megabytes. DVD uses a laser with a wavelength of 650 nanometers. That gives us 4.7 gigabytes of data. Blu-ray uses a 120 nanometer laser. That's a blue laser, and that gives us 25 gigabytes of data. A pre-recorded disc like this one is manufactured by pressing the pits into the surface of the disc. Of course, this is prone to errors, and we can introduce more errors when we handle the disc. We take care of these errors using error correction codes. A compact disc actually contains 6.99 gigabytes, but only 700 megabytes of that are usable formatted data. The rest is used for error correction. A Reed-Solomon code is used to produce data and erasure bits. This very powerful code allows the correction of a variety of errors that are common in compact disks. The time to solve the error correction code depends greatly depending upon the number of bits that have been erased. In addition to Reed Solomon, compact disks interleave blocks of data to reduce the effects of large data gaps. So, for instance, if you scratch your disk, some of that data will be moved to a different part of the disk so that the data can be recovered using the Reed Solomon code. Optical disks are designed to use very simple, cheap mechanisms. We compensate for the limits of the mechanics by using sophisticated control. I've taken apart a CD drive here. You can see that the mechanism is made of plastic. The center of the disc goes here, and there's a lens here that's at the core of the optical system for the drive. If we turn it over, we'll see that there's a screw here that moves the optical mechanism back and forth along the disc is known as a sled. It rides along a track pushed by the motor. The optical system itself has a laser and a diffraction grating to help focus the laser. In addition to the diffraction grating, there's a separate lens that is controlled by electromagnets to adjust its focus. The laser shines through this optical system, is reflected off the optical disc, goes back into a set of detectors. We use those detectors to determine both the focus of the laser and the tracking along the disc. When the beam is in focus, we get a round spot reflected off the disc. An oval spot means that the laser is out of focus, and it can be out of focus in several different ways. So we use a constellation of optical detectors to tell us about the state of the beam. The main set of optical sensors are known as A, B, C, and D. 
and we can use them to read the orientation of the spot and determine whether it's round or oval and in which direction the oval goes. So the overall level of the laser is the sum of A, B, C, and D. The focus error is the difference between A plus C and B plus D. Those are the regions on the opposite sides of the central constellation. In addition, we have two other spots known as E and F that help us with tracking. So the tracking error is computed as E minus F. In order to make sense of these optical readings, the CD processor includes a servo digital signal processor that is dedicated to the control of the mechanism. That DSP has to run at several different rates. The laser focus has to run at 245 kilohertz on a compact disc. The tracking control also runs at 245 kilohertz. The sled control runs at a much lower rate of 800 hertz, and the disc motor runs at a very low rate. Optical disc players are prone to vibration that upsets the alignment between the disc and the reed head. This was the first portable CD player, but even though it was portable, when I played it at home, sitting on a table, I had to tiptoe in order to avoid disturbing it and skipping the music. How do we solve this problem? With buffer memory. The optical disc controller, as we've seen, has a sophisticated multiprocessor to read data from the disc. Rather than play back that data directly, it writes it into memory. A buffer in memory keeps store of the data. As we read more data, we can grow the size of the buffer. Then rather than play back directly, we play back from the buffer. So if we get a jog that causes the optical disc controller to lose track of where it's reading, Rather than stop playback, we can play down from the buffer. That allows us to smooth out the mechanical jogs and give continuous playback. Let's review. Data is stored on pits that's, that are read optically from the surface of the disk. Error correction is used to protect against defects on the disk. We use a simple, cheap mechanism with sophisticated control algorithms to provide high quality data reading. And we use buffer memory to protect against vibration. Thanks. See you later.